Today, we are looking at a tool that I have been wanting to buy for a very long time. Um, but mostly what's been keeping me from buying it is uh, they're, they're friggin' expensive. Um, I, I, I've always looked for a budget-friendly one uh, here and there, you know, scrolling through Amazon, looking at stuff. And I finally found one that uh, actually seems like it will um, uh, suit that budget-friendly bill and still be usable. And that would be this here Top Don TC004 Mini. Um, this particular one, the Mini, they have a two, I'm sorry, a TC004 regular one, which is a little, little bit better than this one. The Mini, again, is a more budget-friendly one. And um, we'll, we'll get into what the differences are later on in the video. But yeah, and I mean, this, this thing... Um, it's going to do what you need it to do, as far as I can see. A lot of the cheaper ones, I've been I've been looking for one of these for 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 years, and uh, every every time I see one, it's like, oh, that looks kind of nice. I kind of dig into it, and that's crap. And uh, the biggest problem is, especially with the cheaper ones. Um, I mean, you could you could get one of these off of off of um, Temu and, and 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 those those type websites for under a hundred dollars, basically. Uh, just under a hundred dollars, but the resolution on the screen is just just glowing blobs in, in the thing you really can't see what's going on. But uh, Top Don has kind of figured out with a little bit of software uh, how to uh, how to make how to make the uh, lower resolution a little bit more usable as far as actually seeing what's going on. Again, we'll get into that a little bit later. But uh, yeah, as far as thermal imaging goes, I mean it's basically the same effect as you would get from a, a IR uh, IR uh, thermometer. Which, which basically everybody has. You point it, you shoot it, and it tells you the temperature. Uh, whereas to this thing, it'll actually show you a picture. So instead of having to, like, um, say you're looking for a radiator that's that's uh, that, that's clocked, all right? Uh, the machine's heating up, the, the temperature gauge is rising up, so you kind of poke through with your IR thermometer and you, and you kind of see where the cold spots are. It's like, okay, I have no flow through the radiator. Whereas to this thing, you can just kind of point it at it, take a, take a, Take a look at the old the old screen there and see where the heat and the and the cold is. Uh, with with thermal imaging, uh, you are not looking at light at all. You are looking at at, at uh, basically heat heat energy, and that's that's what this thing detects. So uh, let's get into the specs of the thing, and then we'll take a take a look down on it. Now, as far as the specs go, resolution one twenty eight by one twenty eight, which is Pretty pretty average for um, an IR well a, a thermal imaging camera in this price range, but they have a thing that I couldn't figure out what what it stands for, but it's TISR, which upscales it to 240 by 240, which makes the difference between this and the cheapo ones that you can you can find find online. Uh, the upscaling, I, for, as far as I could see, it just basically kind of sharpens the edges on things. It kind of makes it a little bit easier for you to. Uh, see what you're looking at in the infrared field as compared to just the visual field. Uh, another another cost-cutting measure they do, if you can see on the front here, you got just the IR sensor. The more expensive ones will actually have a IR sensor and a regular camera. Then they just overlay those so you can really see what's going on and you can kind of kind of mix in uh, real life and, 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 infrared, and infrared to give you a better idea as to what's going on. But again, budget-friendly model. Um, we're looking at, as far as runtime goes, 15 hours of runtime, 25 Hertz, uh, refresh rate, which is nice. Meaning when you're coming back and forth, it's not, it's not real jumpy. It's quick to, uh, it's quick to get, get back on, uh, back on a calibration. Uh, as far as temperature range goes, we're looking at between minus four degrees to 842 degrees Fahrenheit and minus 20 degrees Celsius up to 450 degrees Celsius. And it is rated for a uh, IP54. Uh, IP54 just basically you're you're good for dust and and uh, light water. You know, standing standing in a nice little drizzle, it's not going to mess it up. So, uh, what do you say we flip the camera down, uh, take a take a close look at this? We'll go through all the features, go through the menus, and uh, I'll pop in some pictures of stuff that I took so you kind of get a better idea of what what kind of resolution you're looking at outside of outside of the little bench area there. And uh, yeah, let's get into that. All right, well, this is it out of the box right here. Not much to see in the box, just a big foamy uh, case to hold the thing in. Um, probably want to hold on to that. I don't think you want this thing bouncing around too much, at least the uh, the foam insert on the thing. But, yeah, as far as you get in the box, uh, owner's manual, little lanyard, which I usually throw these out, but I think it would be nice to kind of have this thing on a hook on, on my hand 
or at least a place to hook the thing with. Um, and a USB C cable for charging. Uh, as far as the uh, functions of the thing goes, uh, we got ourselves a IR sensor in the front that we looked at. Uh, on the top, you got a semi sealed uh, USB C type charger over here, which trust me, it opens. Um, on the bottom here, again, you get the hook for the for the old uh, lanyard there, and you get a uh, uh, quarter 20 mount, which actually kind of makes sense for this because you might not have this thing in your hand. You kind of stick it on a on a little bit of a camera mount and it's actually got a, a little feature in there where it'll automatically take pictures for you. So uh, we'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, on the front here, you got just a trigger. Uh, this one, again, the, the one of the cost saving measures on this thing, um, it doesn't do video. It just does pictures. Uh, as far as storage goes, you're going to get yourself uh, basically a half a gig, a half a gig of storage. And as small as these files are, I mean, it's, it's probably at the very least in the hundreds of pictures you can save on this, if not the thousands. But yeah, just take a picture, push the button, and you'll see a little thing coming up said saving. And uh, yeah, it just means it's saving the picture. On the front, obviously, you have the display here, and you have the buttons, the function buttons, which we'll uh, get into. All right, we kind of zoomed in a little bit here to give you a better look. I'm going to leave the peel on the thing because I think that's going to help with the glare coming off of my uh, coming off of my light there. And I think if I kind of do some action like that, that'll keep everything still for me. Yeah, that'll work. So to turn it on. Uh, power button right over here. Just uh, push and hold for, I think, five, six seconds or something like that. You'll see it light up. There we go. And now it's ready to go. And now just on the screen, we're kind of zooming in a little bit here. Uh, on the top is the scale of what you're looking at, the highest temperature it's seen and the lowest temperature it's seen. Uh, you can control some of this stuff in the settings. Over here, you got uh, center which is the center dot here. And then it has a red dot, which you're not really going to see too much of, but a red dot will find the hottest point on, well, in the viewfinder and the blue and the blue dot will find the uh, lowest temperature in the, uh, in the blue dial. So you kind of, kind of use this to hone in on, on, on your hot spots or your cold spots. Not going through the, the actual buttons on the thing. Um, okay. Is okay. Uh, this button over here is your back button and your power button. I will say that if you just single tap your power button, it turns the screen off and it gives you a little bit of, um, a little bit of battery saving. It doesn't actually turn it off. There's a, there's an auto off setting in here where you could set it between, I think it's like 10 minutes up to an hour and 20 minutes. But yeah, this, if you're, you know, you're not going to be using it for 10 minutes. It just, Let's it let's it turn on and off very quickly. Uh, your up and down button. I mean, obviously up and down when it's at its home screen down here. The up button. I'm not 100 percent sure what that does. It kind of feels like it's some type of calibration button, like resets to calibration. I'm not sure, but doesn't seem to do much. But the down button actually changes to the different um, color palettes that it'll use for for uh, the thermal imaging. All right, so going through the through the different color palettes on the thing, and the color palettes are just, it, it really comes down to personal preference as to what would be more clear for you as far as what the, uh, as far as what, what, what you're looking at. Uh, starting off would be your just your standard uh, thermal imaging color palette. It's kind of a, um, not quite rainbow, but blue cold, red hot, or yellow hot, or white hot, actually, if it gets hot enough. Um, I, I took um, some pictures of my truck out in my out in my driveway. Uh, I'll drop them in here. The square in the front is the transformer in the front of my yard. I got my power lines are underground, so our transformers are in our front yards. Uh, every Not everyone's house. I just got lucky to get one, I guess. But uh, yeah, I'll drop those pictures in as I go through these. And then that way there, you can kind of see what these things look like. Um, you can see the transformer in the foreground and my truck in the background with all the hot spots on the, on the old truck there. But um, yeah, so that's the first one. The second one would be uh, kind of your, your rainbow color, more like if you saw the Predator movie, that's, uh, that's, that's, more more of the color palette that you're looking at there. Uh, the next one after that is um, gray scale, but highlights hot temperatures in red and cold temperatures would be in black. Uh, the next one after that is just white hot and black cold. The one after that, which I don't think anybody would really use, but would be uh, black hot and white cold. 
and you skip back and it brings you back to the regular one. Now, getting into the menus, you start those off by pressing the OK button, which brings up the menu um, menu display there. Um, starts off with albums. You know, I'll zoom in and post so that way there you can see these a little bit better. Uh, starts off with albums, which is just basically the pictures that you have taken. Uh, we go into OSD. OSD, uh, you got, you could select your, your minimum as far as the display goes. Minimum, maximum, all, all the good stuff that you'd want to put on your, uh, on your, uh, on your display. If, if you choose, uh, I just do min, max and center as far as temperature readings go. Uh, again, that pushes you back. And then we go into measurement parameters here. Uh, this particular one you're looking at, well, the first one is I'm kind of getting off camera here on a, or off frame here. Uh, the first one is MSTivity. Um, uh, adjustments or parameters. Basically with this, uh, shiny things might might come off as, as being a higher temperature than they actually are. So you can go in here and actually set the, because the surface area things and the reflectivity of it can, can change what this thing is actually reading as far as temperature goes. So you can kind of go in here and you can change the emissivity, which I'm 100% sure I'm using that, I'm saying that word wrong, to uh, something more appropriate that you're, that you're trying to take a reading off of. Go back to the menu there. All right. Um, measurement modes. Now, oh, this changes it from uh, minus four Fahrenheit up to 302. And then if you want to go into a higher, if you're looking at higher temperatures up to uh, 842, it goes from 212 to 842 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. You switch that over to, uh, to Celsius for the, for the rest of the planet. All right, now moving on to, um, kind of hard for me to see, where where you where you have glare, I don't. Where I where I have glare, you don't. It's just, <laughs> so, uh, temperature units we are looking at here. Um, of course, I got mine set on Fahrenheit. Uh, you could do Calvin, uh, Kelvin, not Calvin. That that's a guy lives down the street from me. Um, yeah, Calvin, uh, Calvin, basically for you who don't, who, for those of you who don't know, it's, it's more of a sciencey, uh, type measurement. I mean, zero Kelvin is basically no heat whatsoever, basically no energy. Um, we, we wouldn't use that in the day to day. And then of course, Celsius is basically marked on the, the different states of water. I mean, zero, zero degrees Celsius, you're looking at frozen water and then at a hundred degrees Celsius, it's turned into a gas and in, in Fahrenheit, that's just, we, we do that to get on everyone else, everyone else in the world's nerves, I guess. I don't know. We still using it though. Uh, temperature alarms. We'll, we'll look at that in a second. That's actually kind of a cool feature. That's the thing I was talking about where it will automatically take pictures for you. And, uh, we're coming down past that and we get into system settings and it's basically your, your settings, you know, brightness, time, date, all that stuff, stuff that you would set up languages and all that, all that good stuff. So getting into that little temperature alarm thing that actually will automatically take a picture for you. Now that most of the time you're going to be used to using this thing handheld, but say if you got something that you need to look at while, you know, you're, you're not in the area of the thing, again, put it up on a tripod and point it at the thing and just let it run and it'll automatically take a picture for you, which is kind of cool. But uh, yeah, basically you come in here, go into your temperature alarms, scroll up and down, uh, high temperature, you could set an alarm for that, set an alarm for low temperature, you could actually set the temperature that you are uh, wanting to detect down there, and then you could set for auto capture, so it'll take a picture and then how frequently it'll take the picture. We're going to go with uh, low temperature alarm just because that's easier to recreate here for the uh, demonstration. So go over there. We got the temperature set for 21 degrees Fahrenheit. Now I have a um, little little ice pack over here. And when we come over to it, it should detect it. And that little triangle is telling me that I got a low temperature alarm. And if it was set, this thing will be taking pictures of it, which again would come in handy if you don't necessarily have this thing with you when you when you're trying to take your uh, take your pictures there. All right, well, I mean that's about it as far as the settings go. It wouldn't be a, a thermal imaging 
camera video unless I, I play with it a little bit. So uh, one thing too, I wanted to, I want to kind of make clear is that this is, is really a differential as far as the colors go. So, I mean, if you're looking at zero degrees and something is 40 degrees, it's going to glow like it's 500 degrees. So keep that in mind. So here's a good example of that. We got the brick of uh, ice down here and now all of a sudden the, the bench looks like it's, it's, it's flaming hot when it's actually just, uh, what is it? 71 degrees, which is, which is the ambient temperature of my room. And you could actually kind of see down at the bottom here where, where it's still, still cold in the pad. Speaking of which, you got my, got my hand down here. And if I place my hand on here for a couple of seconds, take it away. And then you could actually kind of still see the ghost, the ghost of my hand mark down there, <laughs> which is, which is kind of cool. Another neat little demonstration would be with with the old flashlight here. And as you can see, it doesn't even really really see the flashlight aside from the from the uh, the end of it getting warm from from the LED heating up down there. Now, if I take this and I kind of do like this, I could actually draw <laughs> on the bench there with the uh, with the LED with the heat from the LED. Pretty cool. And now I switched it over to high temperature mode. So it's basically looking for anything that is over 200 degrees. So anything below that really isn't going to show up too well. But if we take the old, uh, the old torch out here, and just kind of mix that in the front there. Yeah, you can actually see it. And that flame really goes out pretty far. Wow. That up all the way? No, it's almost out of gas. But uh, yeah, you kind of get the... You kind of get the idea there. All right, that's about it as far as playing with the thing. Um, it, it definitely definitely seems to do what it's doing. Like I said, I've, I've had this for about a week and a half now, and I have been playing with it. I'll drop in a couple of pictures. I think I got a picture of, um, uh, I think it was my, my front brake, brake rotor on my truck, and uh, I was filling up the sink with hot water just to kind of kind of get an idea of what kind of resolution you're getting as far as actually seeing what you're seeing. But um, yeah, uh, like I said, it it's a handy little tool and uh i'm looking forward to finding reasons to use it so uh let's close it out so there we go that is the top don tc004 mini thermal imaging camera and um from the little bit i played with it for the past week or so and a uh, little bit I, I sit down here on on the old bench uh it, it seems like it is it at the very least a functional uh, thermal imaging camera for for what you would need that for uh funny thing funny thing is about a year ago um, like I said, I've been looking for one of these for years. Top Don actually reached out to me and they asked me if I wanted to, uh, wanted to review one of their, uh, higher end ones. And it was, it was over twice the price of this. And I, I, I try to keep it. I got a rule that I try to keep everything I buy to, to show on this channel, something that I personally would buy. And, uh, well, I mean, just, you know, I hate it when, you know, you start watching somebody, then they start getting bigger. Then all of a sudden they're starting to talk about stuff that, that you can't afford because they can afford it now. So I try to keep it, I try to keep it, try to keep it on, 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 on my uh, regular level there. But uh, yeah, they reached out to me and I, it was really nice looking. And I was like, eh. I had to, I had to, well, I just ignored them. So uh, maybe, maybe they'll reach out to me again and uh, offer me that again. And if you guys are interested, maybe I'll actually take them up on that offer and uh, take a look at a higher end model if you guys are curious. But uh, yeah, all that aside, um, do you need one of these to, to be a mechanic? Uh, absolutely not. I've done, done it just fine for the past 30 years turning wrenches without one of these, but I could definitely see how this would come in handy. Um, any, anything mechanical, uh, temperature, a temperature differential, uh, is, is a good indication of a failure either, you know, everything else is hot and this is cold or everything else is cold and this is hot. Uh, it, it'll definitely kind of, kind of expedite that, that, uh, 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 diagnostics on things. So, and I mean, not only that, but it, it it's, it's kind of cool to have. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm glad I got this one and I'm glad I could finally find one, uh, that was actually budget friendly. So, uh, yeah, I think that's about it for this video. Any questions, comments, concerns, leave them down in the old uh, comment section. I will do my best to get back to you. I'll throw a link to this down in the description. If you are interested in purchasing one yourself and, uh, yeah, that's about it for this video. I'd like to thank you for watching. There you go.